Hello, everybody, and welcome in to another episode of the Couch GM's Podcast. It is Friday, November 3rd, 2023. I'm your host, George Kurt, joined by the one and only Cody Rodap. Cody, nine weeks in. Well, I should say eight, and we're going into week nine. This has run so fast. Man, I don't want to talk to you. Okay, bye. I mean, we're playing. We're finally matched up in our league of record, and I started DeAndre Hopkins after his big week. He disappointed with only two catches for less than 20 yards on Thursday night football. So rough start for the week, and George's going to get the victory because he's the luckiest fantasy player I've ever met. This is funny because this is going to come out during Thursday night football, most likely, but and then DeAndre Hopkins is going to score three touchdowns. But this is Cody trying to use his reverse logic reverse on the fantasy football guy. That's what it's going to call it. Reverse podcastology. podcastology. Yep. That, we found the name of the episode. We're only a minute and nine seconds into the recording. So here we are. Um, You're all right. So as you guys know, if you listen in, uh, this is our normal show. We release on Fridays or Thursday nights. Uh, Cody does a bonus episode every week as well on the Couch GM's World Cup, our four-year fantasy football experience. So make sure you check that out as well. You can find that on our YouTube or you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok at the Couch GMs for stuff on that and even more content. And as always, feel free to send us a DM, comment, whatever, with your fantasy questions each week as we are here to try to help you win your fantasy leagues. Cody, I mean, I, I got through that whole thing, so hopefully I'll be able to get through the show even though I'm still a little bit sick. Why don't we sit back, relax, and chat? I mentioned the tr- I mentioned the bonus episode that Cody does about the Couch GMs World Cup. He actually outlined all the trades from the NFL trade deadline at the beginning of that episode. So make sure if you're interested how the deadline went, go check that out. Not a lot of big fantasy relevant news, so we're not going to really touch on too much of it. We might mention a couple of things as we go through the show, but wanted to preface with that. Injury news. Lil Kirko, as it has on our rundown here, Kirk Cousins is officially out for the year with a torn Achilles. Really bad news there for fantasy owners, for the Minnesota Vikings, and for Kirk Cousins. Yeah, definitely uh, a blow for the Minnesota Vikings. And it's interesting because he might have played his last game because there's all the talk here. Um, I know Kevin O'Connell, the head coach of the Vikings, says he hopes to. Uh, I know Justin Jefferson and him are real close. Uh, and there's even been some rumors that Justin Jefferson wants, doesn't want to sign his contract unless he knows it's going to be Kirk Cousins. Um, so that team is really close, and we'll see if he gets there. Uh, but I mentioned the trades. You can check them all out on the bonus episode earlier this week. We did it right when trade deadline happened. Uh, but one trade I did want to hit on because it relates to this specifically is because of the news that – little. I almost said Lil Kirko. Kirk Cousins is out. Uh, the Vikings went and traded for Josh Dobbs, who got benched this week in case Kyler was going to get back or for rookie Clayton Toon. Uh, so Josh is on the move again. Hopefully the Minnesota Vikings already have his jersey in the pro shop there in Minnesota, or there'll be another TikTok about it. Uh, and we'll have to see how that team goes. Um, and then one other quick thing on Kirk Cousins. I know uh, people have given him a bad rap. Uh, I think the football documentary quarterback on Netflix did a great job of making him more likable. Uh, And I did see, because obviously this week was Halloween and trick or treat, uh, even though he just tore his Achilles, he still attended the youth trick or treat event that they had at one of the Vikings facility rolling around on his little scooter. um, (laughs) Just because that city and organization means so much to him. Uh, so just shout out Kirk Cousins as a Packer fans. I don't, I don't do that very often, uh, but you never want to see a player like that get injured. Um, and so shout out to him. 100%. He is a great person. And like Cody said, we highly recommend the documentary series quarterback. If you guys have not watched it really does put a good light on who these NFL players are off the field. And Kirk Cousins, even especially is a special human being. So we have prayers to him on a full recovery, and we hope to see him on the field, if not in Minnesota, on another team next year. Moving on to some coaching news. We know that the Las Vegas Raiders are a mess right now. There was a whole entire thing that happened on Monday night with 
them just stalling on offense. Garoppolo might not be the quarter is, is not the quarterback anymore for them. They also fired their head coach, Josh McDaniels and their GM. A lot of changes coming to Las Vegas. Yeah. And the, Josh McDaniels was hired before the start before the start of last season. So he made it a year and a half at this stop. And you could just tell the players were frustrated. A lot of things were starting to come out of the locker room. These player own only meetings or player meetings with the owner. Um, and that Monday night performance was quote unquote pathetic. Uh, not that yeah. they some players played hard and tried to, you know, go out and for their team, but they just weren't set up to succeed. I know Devonte Adams was very frustrated on the sideline. We all saw those clips. Uh, Josh Jacobs was asked after the game, "How do we fix the offense?" He said, "That's not my job." It seems like the <laughs> offense, the uh, the coaching staff, just really lost the locker room. Um, and hopefully, they they found a right guy. I was listening to some of the introduction uh, of their new interim head coach, which I his name is escaping me. Something Pierce, I believe. Uh, George, that's your cue to look that up. Uh, but and he he went on a rant about like Antonio Pierce, Antonio Pierce about how he was not a rant, but it was a bad word. He went on, you know, when he was talking about what it meant to him, how much he enjoyed watching the Raiders as a kid, how much the culture meant to him, how much he was excited to bring that back. So, depending on how they do rest the season, because it's still early enough, he might be in line for uh, the head coaching job. We'll have to wait and see, or if they go in another route coming up in the offseason. But one down, one is down. And all of you that had Josh McDaniels fired as the first head coach, that was probably a pretty nice payday if you uh, are the betting of those kind of odds. It's also worth noting Josh McDaniels is now the first head coach in NFL history to be fired two times midseason. Yeah. Is he going to go back to New England next week? I mean, every other coach has gone back to New England after the whole cycle, so why not add him into the mix as well? Um, well last time, so. I mean, well, unless Belichick doesn't make it past the end of the season as well. I don't think he's going to get fired midseason, but there's a chance if they go into another rut, he doesn't make it to next season. And then I don't know if McDaniels. Bill Belichick, defense coordinator for the Green Bay Packers next year. Let's put that out into the <laughs> universe. All right. That's that's enough speculation for that one. Well, why don't we talk about this week and jump into our week nine NFL preview. I know you missed them. Bye weeks are back. Uh, we got four teams on bye this week and some pretty big ones as well here. We got the San Francisco 49ers. I'm sure a lot of people are missing 49ers this week, as well as Jacksonville Jaguars, the Detroit Lions, and the Denver Broncos. Um, not a lot of Broncos being missed, but that's not the point. The there. Lions um, and Jaguars. You're missing yeah. ETN, Jamar Gibbs, David Montgomery, both quarter quarterbacks. I mean, three quarterbacks yeah. for them. The so. entire 49ers offense, Christian McCaffrey, who's dominated worlds, except for the one week he didn't. Um, yeah, it's it's a big bye week when you look at the quality of fantasy players that are on bye, even though it's not one of these six team buys. This still approaches by Mageddon status for some of the big names that you got sitting on bye. And we also got a team. Did George just mute himself? That was strange. Do you do you have me here? I got you. It looked like you muted yourself. Yeah, it uh, so my mic disconnected, so I'm not sure. Hopefully, connected again to the correct mic. You sound, sound great. Okay, okay I mean, cool. You sound a little uh, sickish. You yeah, can, you can I definitely mean, feel the drainage in your throat. Uh, but we can talk football, not new kids, so if that's okay. That I'm I'm cool with that. I'm sure the fans are cool with that as well. But thank you for throwing in uh, Cody MD here. Anyway. Uh, game over in Germany. Yeah, right. Cody MD. Um, the Miami Dolphins are hosted by the Kansas City Chiefs across the pond. This is a pretty good game to put over in Germany. So I hope those fans come out and get loud. Dolphins underdogs by two points over under an insane 51. You don't see many games in the 50s. I got 51 over under for this one. And no Patrick Mahomes flu game. Um, we do have CEH with that illness as a DNP and Jarek McKinnon as a limited participant. They'll probably both go, but if anything, it just helps the case for Isaiah Pacheco that has been pretty solid as an RB2 so far this year. 
And on the Dolphin side, you got Raheem Moster went from did not participate to limited participant in practice. I think we mentioned last week this could be his last week without a chan again. Well, next week will be a bye. So I'm trying to th- think because you have to remember the bye week rule. So the IR rules now because it's four games is four, four games. games. It's yeah. not. So if you have a bye week in there, it is multiple weeks. So I'm trying to think if that this will be. Will next week be the fourth week or the fourth game? Uh, I wasn't prepared. I will do some research weekend. for you here. I'm sorry. No, you're good. Go ahead and talk the game. Uh, the first question is, will Taylor Swift be in attendance? Yeah, it's a big or one. Or will, will Travis Kel- Kelsey be held to his own devices? That's what we're all trying to find out because there's a big stat difference. I don't I don't know if she's going to be there. Uh and I don't think it really matters because this is going to be a great game in Germany. These two teams together uh, should really uh, light it up. And we'll start with the Chiefs side. I know there's a lot of disappointed fantasy owners out there because of the, one, the weather that turned into be nothing, uh, just old. And then Pat Mahomes had the flu. So he definitely did not look like himself against the Denver Broncos last week. Uh, we'll see what the recovery looks like. I expect him to be back on track. Uh, so no, like fading him. You're still playing Patrick Mahomes. Obviously you're still playing Travis Kelsey. Still no really any other chiefs, chiefs wide receivers that I I'm like definitely playing, but I would play Pacheco in this matchup. And then on the dolphin side Tua Hill waddle. I saw one person in the world cup has the hill waddle stack in their yep. lineup. And I was just like that. Shouldn't work, but it is both had over 20 points last week. I'm like, this shouldn't be so they keep rolling with them, and then uh, Mostert this week as well. I know he had a little bit of a down week last week, but he's still the guy, uh, until a chan gets back. Until a chan gets back, and this is game four. Okay. Um, so it they did elect to have a bye after the overseas game, teams have elected to not do that, so it is by week 10. Then week 11, a Chan is eligible to come off injured reserve. I think the expectation is he will, but we will learn more about that in preparation for week 11. I would prepare if you're a Raheem Mostert owner to hit that sell button um, either before this week or after, because there's some uncertainty coming up for that. We thought we lost him already. He now has value again. Try to cash in on that value before you could lose it again. Yeah, and but there is also a chance that a Chan doesn't like it's still most search down like we've seen that with uh mcdaniels and shanahan disciples sometimes they just like to switch it up in the middle of the season for but josh for like no reason so it's not a must sell i guess is what i'm saying for most if you can get value yeah. for him value for him but let's not absolutely sell raheem Mostert. that's true too um i mean yeah you're right the 49ers backfield pre mccaffrey was an absolute mess trying to figure out if it was going to be jeff wilson Eli Mitchell, all the other guys that I can't remember all the names. Um, They're probably anyway, on the Dolphins right now, though. They honestly probably are. The only one that hasn't been was Salvan Ahmed, I think. So, is that enough? One o'clock for the, games. I was going to say, is that enough for the Germany talk? I think it is. We can move to the one o'clock window back to the U.S. with the Seattle Seahawks traveling east at one o'clock to the Baltimore Ravens. I had to mention it before Cody could because he mentioned it as we were getting ready for the show. Uh, Seahawks six point underdogs, six point underdogs. Yep, that's why I, East Coast, coming West Coast, <laughs> one o'clock. They did just get a, they did acquire uh, Leonard Williams, so they, you know, I know Gus Edwards had a really nice day last week. Uh, so yeah, I, I was pretty shocked at this line. Uh, it was one that is going to be now double check for a fifth time, and maybe I'll just. I was looking at last week or something like that, but I'll double check while we're talking right here. Uh, but in terms of who we're going to play fantasy wise, because if it is Seattle plus I'm taking that all day, but even with the East coast, West coast thing, uh, nope, it is still Seattle plus six, but on the Raven side, uh, Lamar is good. Andrews tight end suck. So you can play him. Uh, even though it was interesting, George, and I were talking a little often, like, He's the number two tight end and has like four weeks out of the eight weeks under 10. So that just goes to show on even the top guys and at the position are not being those, you know, 
elite difference makers that we have been accustomed to the last couple of years. Tight ends position is down all around. But with OBJ limited, uh, there's Zay Flowers still. But are you really willing to start any of them? Zay Flowers, I think, has been consistent enough that I'm willing to throw a um, a flex play at. Um, I think that's the only one. OBJ, you uh, you probably dropped him because of how frustrating it's been. OBJ has been absolutely fantastic at drawing pass interference. And that's probably where his value has ended this year. He has been frustrated. He was throwing his helmet on the sideline because he has had so many targets in the end zone this year. And every single time a defender just hugs him and he can't get a touchdown, but he gets, he's had, I I would probably say 10 pass interference calls against him this season. It's pretty impressive. And then on the Seattle Seahawks side, I mean, the Ravens do also have to face a rookie of the month, Devin Witherspoon, who's been playing lights out since he came back. But Seattle uh, looks like DK and Lockett are both good to go this week. I was able to pick up Tyler Lockett on waivers last week in one of my leagues. It was very exciting uh, for me to be able to do that. And he hasn't been like the best player in fantasy football, but that was cool. Uh, And then Kenneth Walker, he had a quote-unquote down week for him. Like it was right around the 10 mark. Uh, But even though I know the Ravens defense is pretty good, but you can still roll him this week especially with bye weeks. I threw some feelers out to our betting expert, Kempe, uh, to talk about that plus six on Seattle. I don't have a response yet. If I get one, we'll hit the rewind button and we'll uh, talk about it just because I'm interested to see how that kind of fits into how Vegas does things. Um, but we, in the meantime, we can move on to the Chicago Bears and the New Orleans Saints. Uh, injury report, I think we're still going to be missing Justin Fields this week. I think there's a chance he comes back next week from what I understand um, because he didn't go on IR. I heard it was going to be two to three weeks. Um, And then on the Saints side, Taysom Hill's limited participant. He should be good to go. And Taysom Hill has been used heavily in the last few weeks in this offense. It's like they went from barely putting him on the field to now like basically the offense runs through Taysom Hill, it seems like. I mean, he's scoring points. It's still Taysom Hill. Like my uh, my wife, fun fact. So last week, uh, we, she was debating with me which tight end should she stream last week. Yep. And her three options were Taysom Hill, Dalton Kincaid, and Justin Ferguson. Jake Ferguson. Jake Sorry. Ferguson. Yep. Uh, and I said, I said, well, I'm picking up Kincaid if you don't. And then yep. she said. I said, then you also have the stack of, because she has Dak, of Jake Ferguson. So I said, if you want the stack, have the stack. I mean, it's a tight end stack. It's not that impressive, but it was a good matchup. And she's like, but I kind of like Taysom Hill. And I was like, okay, go with Taysom Hill, but I'm picking up Dalton Kincaid. Well, she was yep. worried that, uh, because I was so confident in Dalton Kincaid, that she should go with him, but she wanted Taysom Hill. Dalton Kincaid had 15 points last week for a tight end. That's really good. Yep. Taysom Hill at 21. I've yes, heard he that did. every day this week. Good. Uh, Taysom Hill had more points. I was like, I know. But was that six points the difference in her matchup too? No, she won by like 30. Oh, so it's just a petty thing at this point. Yeah, she's like, I could have scored more. <laughs> that That is the competitive edge I like to see though. It's like, I won by 30, but I could have won by 36. Cody. Yeah, my, my wife is too too competitive. I like it. <laughs> so there's a little side story into uh how last week happened and she wants me to reiterate she didn't tell me what to do i didn't tell her what to do she did what she wanted but she was mad that she asked me and she won by 46 points 46 so, so it could have been over 50 so that's like complete blowout to oh my god stop they already lost territory it could have been much more pg-13 with that but i kept it pretty pg um <laughs> I will say, though, for her sake, I like the long term outlook for Dalton Kincaid better than Taysom Hill. So I think in the long run, that was a good, a better ad um, because Taysom Hill has had the roller coaster of the Saints use him. He's fantastic. And then all of a sudden he falls off. But we know that Taysom Hill, when he's on a streak of being used like this and he's hot, he is one of the best tight ends in the league as long as your league allows him to go in the tight end spot. Yeah, for sure. So 
I, I don't know which league doesn't allow him in the tight end spot anymore. I, mean, I don't I know, but I all... keep hearing everyone mention it, so I feel like I have to mention it. Maybe they all do now. I don't know. <laughs> all right. I'm the only one I can think that might no, that that would be uh whatever the one that we use for our dynasty league is like the non oh, sleeper. One. No, sleeper lets him go in tight end, I'm pretty sure. No, not that one. Uh, oh, my fantasy league. That one. Yeah. That one I wouldn't know, but so, I mean, I got, wouldn't know about like CBS or anything either. So CBS has a fantasy. They do. <laughs> oh, uh, sorry. Uh, do you remember the sponsor. TV show, the league? Yes. Barely. Yeah. They, they, it. yeah, the, yeah, I know, but they I use CBS sports for their fantasy. And apparently they still have a platform, but I think it's pay to enter. Like you have to pay to run the league on it. So gotcha. Interesting. Yeah. What game are we on? Because that was such a tangent. I know, right? Cardinals Browns is up next. Um, and speaking of interesting spreads this week, I mean, it's the Browns, and the Browns have done a lot better than we've thought. But they are seven and a half point favorites over the Arizona Cardinals. They are another West Coast team coming east as well. Um, and the over unders all the way down at thirty seven and a half. Browns have a lot of people on the injury report. We got Amari Cooper, uh, Jerome Ford, and David Njoku all limited, as well as Deshaun Watson as a limited participant in practice. We saw him return one time already from the shoulder injury, and then he left a game in the middle of the game and didn't come back, missed another week. Is Watson going to be okay finally? I mean, I'm sure you don't even know either. Look, uh, one, I assume by this line, they're expecting Kyler not to play. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's going to be rookie Clayton Toon. And I feel better about it if Watson doesn't play. Watson didn't look good last year. He hasn't looked good at all yeah. this year. Like, it's true. I don't know what to do about, like, honestly, which is crazy. I feel better at PJ Walker than Deshaun Watson right now. And I feel better about the other pieces around him that are catching the ball if it's PJ Walker. Just like Watson has not looked good since returning. It's true. And we'll have to wait and see if he does go. That's going to be a big question mark. And bye weeks, you know, are crazy right now. And I'm not willing to, I'm not going to go out there and say like, well, if Watson plays it, Amari Cooper, like, I'm not telling you to do that, but I'm telling you to at least have that conversation. I'm telling you to just not have Amari Cooper on your roster because I can never get behind him. But <laughs> every time I have him, he has one good week the week before I trade for him. And then he didn't, he scores that many points in the next four weeks combined. So. It's he's a frustrating fantasy player, but you know that the talent's there. It's but I think Watson doesn't help him right now. You're right. Um, but I Watson did have a couple of decent games down the stretch at the very end of last year. It's just we didn't really notice because the Browns were kind of fizzling. Uh, because he did become someone that people were trying to play in fantasy in like the fantasy playoffs. Um, I was never on board for that, but I get why people were when he was scoring 16 to 18 points. Um but for all the assets around it, I agree. I'd rather see PJ Walker. He was now officially added to their active roster, so we don't have to worry about the game day call ups. Like he's going to be locked up for them. Um, and we have to see about the Jerome Ford slash Kareem Hunt situation. Um, I think it's going to continue to be a split, and this might be one of the splits where both of them are going to be good to go. I'm good with rolling both out this week because the matchup's good. Uh, but long term, we have to keep an eye on it. Yeah, I'm with you. Um, well, and then Cardinals the put what I said, I'm good playing both this week. Sorry. Yeah, no, you're good. Um, and then Cardinals side of the ball, their running back situation still interesting without James Connor. I think he's eligible to come off next week as well. Um, off of injured reserve. They have Amari DeMarcado listed as it did not participate on Thursday. Keontae Ingram's the next guy on that on their depth chart i don't like it in the matchup i don't even know if i really love demarcado in the matchup uh because the browns front four is really good and kyler murray is still on injured reserve and their injury report had him go from full participant to not listed we have not heard he's been activated yet so i'm not sure if that was an error or if he plans on being activated and being active but him being active does not necessarily mean he's going to start. He could back up. Um, but that's something worth noting that he's probably getting close. Yeah, I, I mean, I think it'll be this week or next week 
for sure. And that's just something to keep an eye on, um, especially as we progress later to the week. And if he is active, you can find us on the Couch GMs, not on the Couch GMs, on X or Twitter, whatever it is, at the Couch GMs. And uh, we, we repost like important news and stuff like that. And we'll be sure to do that uh, if Kyler Murray is back. And you'll see that line change. So if you're sitting here, Friday morning with seven and a half, and you think Kyler's going to go? If you live in Arizona, you might be hearing something different on the radio. Uh, go ahead and go ahead and get a little action on that. I want to give you a little bit of. Uh, remember, I said I hit the rewind button when I heard back from Kempe. Uh, we did hear back from Kempe about that Seattle plus six, so we're gonna hit the rewind button here. And he said the line actually started at four and a half this week, and there's a lot of money coming in on the Ravens. So he thinks that it's a mixture of them not respecting the Seahawks and trying to figure out where the betting community will even it out that they'll actually get money on the Seahawks side instead of just the Ravens side. Uh, so it's kind of a mixture of two things. And he also put in the note that he loves Seahawks plus six. Gotcha. Interesting how Vegas does that, trying to get their money back. So making the spread look a little bit more enticing. And it worked because we both were like, yeah, I would, I would take Seattle in that. But, yeah, but I guess at four and a half, I would be thinking, yeah, you know what? Maybe I, maybe I would take Baltimore because that's barely more than a field goal. Like, So I, I get it. Six seems like such a bigger number than four and a half. It's a whole point and a half different. Gotcha. For sure. For sure. Let's uh, Let's fast forward. Back to where we were, and we were wrapping up Cardinals Browns, which means our next matchup is Vikings Falcons, uh, with the aforementioned Josh Dobbs as the backup this week. He did get traded, but Jaron Hall, rookie, I believe out of BYU, if I remember correctly off the top of my head, uh, will be the starter against the Falcons, who are also starting a new quarterback in Taylor Heineke after he came back and looked really good against the Titans and one Van Jefferson had dropped away from leading them to a comeback victory. Uh, Drake London, though, was a DNP this week. Vikings are four and a half point underdogs. Uh, I mean, I guess because of the the rookie, like this game, like betting wise, I'm staying away with it. Over under is 37. Like if you remember like two weeks ago, uh, heck, yeah, it was two weeks ago. It was Packers Broncos. And I was like, oh, we need to get that line down to 36 and a half. Like Vegas just started there, and those are two bad <laughs> offenses. So, like, this is going to be – don't expect to see either of these teams on red zone. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. Um, I have some more faith in Heineke and the Falcons because we know that, like, Taylor Heineke goes out there. He protects the ball. He kind of just does his thing. He's never going to be the, the most – you're right. He just does his thing. He kind of just keeps teams in games. Um, yeah, or he does he goes just enough berserk in the fourth quarter, and it's like, bro, what do you <laughs> do on the sideline? Like, it's that's it's Taylor, Taylor Heineke. Heineke. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, so Bijan, you're still playing. Yes, uh, I would London. say I really like the idea of London, but I don't like the DNP tag on a Thursday. So John U. Smith, top of the bucket. Sure, and then Kyle Pitts somewhere at the bottom of the bucket. Probably uh, bury him under your candy, and if you find him by the end of the weekend, maybe you can play him. Um, but I mean, I know I would eat that much candy. I don't know about you. Yeah, unfortunately, I would. And then on the Vikings <laughs> side, so the big question for the Vikings is like they haven't been gr the best team running the ball. I think there could be an uptick. This week. I just don't know if it's gonna like. I think you can play Madison, uh, just be if by weeks and stuff like that if you need to. I, I know Cam Akers did a touchdown last week, which frustrating frustrating for madison owners um my big question with the vikings is is rookie uh jordan addison has looked really good the last couple weeks with the injury to justin jefferson now with the rookie quarterback are you throwing him in the lineup or you have to wait and see what it is like he wasn't he's good uh but it yeah. wasn't like hammer every like so and you probably have some other options maybe not with buys uh, I know in our league of record, the guy that has him, he has him on the bench this week, despite having multiple bye weeks. I think that's actually the only person not on a bye week on his bench in our league of record. So, so that tells you that like Jordan, the, yeah, that tells you that the confidence isn't quite there and it's not really Addison's fault. 
if it was still Kirk out there throwing the ball, I think Addison would be a solid a flex play. play for sure. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to hold off unless I'm in a situation where I'm desperate. Um, and I'm not in any situations where I'm desperate this week. I was already kind of in a position in all of my leagues where wherever I had to play Addison was always because of a bye week. Um, like I had to play him recently because of a Mike Evans bye week in one league and um the Chargers bye week. I had Keenan Allen in another. I had to play him in that spot. Um, so I'm not I don't have any positions personally where I have to play Jordan Addison, and I have a lot of shares of him between Dynasty and regular leagues. So I think that tells me that I am not confident enough to tell you to put him in the lineup with Jaron Hall at quarterback. Yeah, I think I, I'm right there with you. And all the other KJ Osborne is limited. I don't think we mentioned that one. Definitely don't play Osborne even after his. A lot of people are going to chase points on that, I think. But definitely don't now. For sure, for sure. So, Commanders, Patriots, another <laughs> game. Well, I don't know. Which Commanders are we going to get? Are we going to get the team that has given <laughs> Philly all they can handle for two weeks? Are we going to get the team that couldn't beat the Cardinals? Man. Actually, I think they might have beat the Cardinals. It was very close at the end. No, they might have been the team that lost to the Cardinals. They uh, might have been. The Cardinals have one win. I think it was them. Someone can fact check this while they're watching this and just laugh I'll, I'll look it up. But. Okay, um, the Commanders, I don't even want to no say the Commanders rush. play up to, well, they definitely don't have any pass rush now because they traded their two best pass rushers who already weren't getting home as much as they wished. Um, But anyway, like the Commanders, I want to say play commanders. up in division. They did beat the Cardinals. Yeah, they beat the the Commanders beat the Commanders. The Commanders beat the Cardinals. The Commanders beat the Commanders. The Commanders are about to beat the Commanders. Let's just Wait, say that. Was it not <laughs> the Cowboys that lost to the Cardinals? Yes, it was. Okay. Oh my gosh. Why did we forget that? I You're I am ashamed with as all an Eagles, Eagles fan. Stuff with, yeah. Oh man. That made me happy. Especially on Dallas week. That made me happy. Anyway. Um the commanders, I want to say play up to their division, but it's really only Philly. Like they normally don't really have that competitive of games against Dallas. The Giants made them look embarrassing right before that Eagles game. Um, I have a feeling that like I was super high on the commander's team morale train at the beginning of the year. If you remember that after the sale of the team and that whole preseason thing they had with the uh, Ravens where they threw up an L at the bench as they kicked a walk off field goal. Like, I, but I that feel like team that was their Super Bowl team morale is on the way down. They just traded their two best pass rushers. I am avoiding all the commander's assets that I can. Um, I don't like playing Brian Robinson because the Patriots defense is stout. You may have to play Terry McLaurin. He's probably the best option. I'm not chasing points on Johan Dotson. Um, you could play Sam Howell. Uh, I hope you have a better option. Some people yeah. may not now that Kirk goes gone. Uh, I think that's about it. Would you play Ramondre Stevenson this week or Brian Robinson? Man, I don't want to play Ramondre Stevenson ever. <laughs> you have to pick. That's the point of this game. <laughs> Brian Ramondre Robinson. Ramondre Stevenson. Cool. I think I'm playing. I, mean, I don't know Maybe. who the commanders have on the defensive line anymore. That's I know I'm they saying. have some dude named Mathis well, that just got activated off of IR because of well, they still have my dynasty IR for two years. Hang That's on. all. Let's Jonathan not, Allen. Let's not disrespect their interior. With Jonathan yeah. Allen and Deron Payne. Let's not do that. Uh, but Fair. just want it to the outside. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. All right. Mike that Kosecki was... got learned a lot of blocking from the Patriot from the uh, Dolphins last year. He can block for him on the outside. It's fine. Hey, uh -huh. I saw that man catch a touchdown and hit a gritty. Again. Yes. Again. So don't disrespect Gritty and Kosecki. But please <laughs> talk about the next game. Do I have to? Yeah, I, I mean, sure. Yeah, I yeah. mean, sure. Okay. Tampa Bay Buccaneers traveling out to the Houston Texans. Uh, I was so high on the Texans last week, and then they just spit in my face. But uh, really, um, two and a half point favorites over Tampa Bay. Over-unders at 40. That's a pretty modest number. The Buccaneers started so hot, and now they've been so cold. I don't know why they pulled the uh, cream schools out of out of hiding. Um, yeah, I don't know. 
All right. So we're talking Texans, Buccaneers, and I actually like the cream pickle jerseys, but uh, but they're the such war- bad luck. They won- they lost like twenty something straight games to those things. That's not true at all. I still remember when Josh Freeman lit us up in those ugly jerseys that I think are kind of nice. Josh Freeman beat the Packers in those jerseys. I guarantee it. George is like, I, I probably. Can't look, I, I don't know how to. I'm look not up. looking that up. Forget that. Um, <laughs> it has to happen because why else would I remember Josh Freeman? Let's. You're let's, right. Let, let, let's be honest. I, that's a name that we will never drop on this show ever again. You can chalk it up now. <laughs> okay, back to the Texans side of the ball. Uh, it's not on a rundown, but I'm pretty sure Damian Pierce hasn't practiced this week either. So Devin Singletary is in line to start this week. Not that you're starting any running back versus the. Uh, Buccaneers defensive front, uh, but did just want to throw that out there. That you are Damian right. Pierce, I missed that. Thank you. Damian Pierce is not there. You mentioned, I don't know if you did or not, Robert Woods did not practice either. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's so hard to judge because last week against the Panthers, you thought that was a prime matchup, and C.J. Stroud, it was all right. Like It was like 12 <laughs> points. It wasn't great for what we've seen out of him, but he's a rookie. He's going to have games like that. Tank Dell has been limited, and I think he had like five points last week. Nico Collins has not done much. And against his good team, like you, you're probably going to, I think you could still play CJ Stroud. Uh, there's enough people there that he can still get hit some decent yards against this team. Um, but I don't really like playing Tank Dell in the flex this week or Nico Collins, even with Woods out. Now I say that one of them will probably have a good week, but I don't want to risk it not being the one that's out there if that makes any sense as you wise uh and then on the Buccaneers side like is it I don't even Chris Godwin and Mike Evans you can play them but what about Rashad White what's your thoughts on him so I think Rashad White's fine in this matchup because the Texans defense isn't anything special I think the biggest reason I don't like Rashad White is because he is the highest volume lowest production back in the league if that makes sense like his yards per carry for guys that get 12 or more carries a game is, I think, the lowest in the league. If not, I think it's, I would bet it's Madison just off the top of my head. It's those two, I think. Um, but so I don't like playing him like he is the very extreme. I only play him in top half matchups as opposed to bottom half. I'd bench him um, even though he has the volume. So I think in this matchup, I'm pretty sure the Texans are middle of the pack. Uh, he's He can go in your lineup, but he's not my favorite. Um, I know I have to play him in a league because of bye weeks, because I'm missing McCaffrey, and you could definitely do worse. All right. Now I can talk about this, this game right here <sighs> between the Green Bay Packers and the Los Angeles Rams. Don't sound so excited. The most likely... Brett Rippon led Los Angeles Rams versus the Green Bay Packers who haven't scored a touchdown in the first half in five straight weeks. This game is going to be boring. And guess what? I'm be sitting there watching every minute and getting frustrated when people talk to me because that's what happened. I'm going to sit there. I'm going to watch all of it. (laughs) And who should you play fantasy wise? Probably, uh, Puka Nakua, even though he is limited, play him. Uh, play Daryl Henderson. Heck, you might even want to play Royce Freeman because the Packers' run defense is not very good. Uh, Coop or Cooper? Coop. Coop. I, gonna, I I like that. Coop. Coop. That, that's Cooper Cup for sure. If you didn't, if you didn't get that, uh, which it could just be Cooper for short, I guess too. So, <laughs> see, this game already has me off the rails. Is what I'm trying to say. You're playing him because uh, the Packers did just trade Rasul Douglas, but. Realize both Kua and Cup have Brett Rippon throwing him the ball. It's not Matthew Stafford. So you're going to play them because you probably should, but uh, it might not be pretty. On the Packers side, like everybody is not playing well. Jordan Love has been uh, up and down. Like he's, again, he had a pretty rough week last week, although the team did have nine drops. he only had 12 points fantasy, so it's a decent matchup. So if you need a streamer this week, it's not the worst option. I mean, CJ Stroud or Jordan Love, which 
I was going to say which rookies, both rookies. You can think about that. Uh, the running backs, like Aaron Jones, who's supposedly closer to 100% healthy, but he's been a, in a red non-contact jersey and practice this week. So I don't know what to do with that information. Uh, they're saving him for Sunday. Is They don't want him to take any hits because he's still dealing with that hamstring. But okay, that's sketch. Uh, AJ Dillon has been all right in his, but if he's back to put like that's a, a matchup, Christian Watson can't hang on to the ball. Romeo Dobbs, can he luck into the end zone? Like, there's nobody in this matchup outside of Nakua and Cup that I want to play, and I don't love playing them because of having Brett Rippin. End of rant. Yeah. I mean, you miss the running backs on the Rams because they're probably going to be even better than the receivers because of that defense. But yes, Daryl Henderson. Right. I do like him. Daryl Henderson, maybe even Royce Freeman. Which what year is it? Uh, twenty twenty three. If I can not twenty twenty. No, no, definitely right. not. Okay, just making sure. <laughs> Man, was he on the Broncos at that point? That was that was a throw. I remember trading Royce. Was it Royce Freeman, Freeman or Devin Booker? Not not Devin Booker. That's a basketball Devontae player. Devontae Booker? Is that his name? I think so. Devontae Booker? I'm going to look it up. But, okay. Yeah, I'm just dropping old <laughs> names. Uh, in, this in is... our league of, league of Records sitting in college class, uh, talking to the guy in our league in front of us as the professor was talking, like, accept my trade. Accept my trade. And then it went through, so. <laughs> Yes, you did. I remember that 100%. Anyway, um, feel free to name drop as you find it if it is Devontae Devontae Booker. Booker. I was right? Yes. <laughs> nice. Four o'clock window. Did we're you go finally to San Diego getting State there. University. Man, oh, I went to the University of U- Utah. Sorry. The Utes. All right. Uh, Indianapolis Colts, Carolina Panthers lead off a really good four o'clock window. There's only three games in it, too. <coughs> Ooh, sorry How about that. Um, we got Josh Downs went from not listed to a limited participant in practice uh, for the Colts. He's been pretty good, actually. I'm going to mention I mentioned him in my TikToks. If you guys haven't seen it, um, that he has had 10 plus happy PR points in four straight weeks. Somebody who could go in your lineup despite it being a tough matchup, in my opinion. Uh, we also seen the resurgence of Michael Pittman now that it's not been Anthony Richardson. It's been Gardner Minshew. Minshew's been really good for the weapons in that offense. Uh, even the running backs have been still doing pretty solid, both of them. Yeah, I I like want to trade Zach Moss, but he's been mm-hmm. so productive. Even with Zach Taylor, I'm like, I'm not just trying to give him like three weeks ago. I was trying to just give him away. And now I'm like, well, I mean, I kind of want to hang on to him. Like, he's already getting work. Like, what if Taylor goes down? Maybe he's worth keeping. Maybe he could do a spot start in bye weeks. Like, I think he can play both this week, especially against the Panthers. Uh, they're not a super tough run defense. Um, I like the Minshew play as well. So, this this game does not look good on paper. Uh, there is some definitely intriguing fantasy options. And Adam Thielen, man, that dude just continues to ball out. And I don't. He does. Do, uh, dude, there was a trade in one of our other leagues, not a league of record. At the very beginning of the season, I, I should have scrolled back. That Remember, it was like Adam Thielen as a dynasty league for like a second round pick. Yeah. Or something. And, and we were like, me, I texted Tyler and George in our podcast group chat. And I was like, bro, did I see that right? And guess what? It's probably paying off, which is crazy. Yeah. Whatever we didn't think Adam do. Thielen was going to be worth a second round pick. We're like, ah, fourth. Yeah. No, he's Debated. getting all that second round value out of him right now. 100%. For sure, for sure. Um, It's going to hurt down the road because the longevity is not going to be there in the dynasty. But if you're in a redraft, Adam Thielen, go out there and see what the value is like. Um, we actually have a fan question because Andrew last week during the games messaged me and he was like, is Miles Sanders droppable? I'm currently sitting here looking at him in my lineup doing literally zero. And I got Zach Moss on my bench, who should be a backup now, who is still scoring more than 10. And it's frustrating seeing a primary back do nothing and a secondary back doing something. Is he the primary back, though? That's the question. 
That's Chuba's, the other question. Exactly. Chuba. Chuba's been playing super well uh, this year. And these were just rumors that I saw on Twitter. I don't I don't even think it was like, uh, you know, a top little insider like a Schefter, Pelissero, <laughs> Rappaport, one of those. But I did see something to the effect of like the Panthers are willing to take calls on Miles Sanders. And again, that could have just been some Panthers fan pissed off and somebody picked it up. Like, it, I guess it, I'm being, I saw it on X and you can't believe everything you saw on X. Cause I can't believe you see everything on Facebook. So that just works. But yep, the way Chuba has been playing, I think he slowly has over, despite the $9 million signing bonus or whatever it was, they gave Miles Sanders this year. I feel like Chuba is the starter. So I don't know if I would go as far as saying drop him. Like, because if Chuba gets hurt, like he should be the guy. But I would if if you need pieces, it's a bunch of bye weeks. Like he's not a guy I'm like holding on to. Uh and he doesn't have like the name value to go out and trade him. Uh so in, if you're in a situation where you can cut if you can cut him, if if you're already not playing him, like we say this all the time, like there's guys you don't want to cut, right? Like look at last year when you know. Alex Madison with Dalvin Cook. You knew at some point you were going to use him. He, When Dalvin Cook was healthy, you weren't going to play him, but you didn't want to cut him. If you're not going to play uh, Miles Sanders, and this goes for any player too, especially as we go into, I think there's six teams on buys this week, four teams on buy. We're really going into buy season for fantasy football. So this is a great point. If you're not confident that you're going to play them during the bye week, they don't even need to be on the roster and you can them. Because at that point, you've already lost the confidence in playing them. There's no point in keeping them. Don't even worry about like what happens if – no, you've already lost it. There's guys – everybody is a little bit different on which fantasy players they think have potential rest season. We talk about rest of season value all the time. If you're not confident in playing them, if you're like, yeah, I just don't like them anymore, like I can't trust them, cut them. I just told you that I got Tyler Lockett at the end of the show in off waivers in one of my leagues – Probably because it, he was injured and people were frustrated. Sounds very similar to my Sanders. Yep. It, it might work out. It might not. But if you've already the point where you're not going to play him, then you have no – If it's one of those things we talk about these two. Okay. I was wrong. I'm okay with it. At that point, you're there. And so, yeah, I'm I'm pretty much on board with the, the cut Miles Sanders if you need – not if you have to. Or not like a must cut. Like he's a wasted roster spot. But – if you want to try something else, if you want to go pick up someone else, go for it. Feel free. So the only thing I'm going to say is like, yeah, maybe I am more on board than I was about cutting him. He might not do so much again against Indy. They play Chicago in week 10 on Thursday, even. Maybe keep the stash on the bench uh, until after that Thursday night game. And if he goes off, Maybe you can pawn him on a running back needy team and be like, hey, this could be the breakout he needed. Give me a flex play. Something like that. Yeah, and and listen to what George said. Give me a flex play if he goes off. So there's already an if, and give me a flex player. This isn't, oh, let's just say he goes off for 22 points, right? Really good week. Yep. Don't go, well, I'll give you Miles Sanders and, uh, and, uh, Tank Dell for DeAndre Swift. Yeah, no. no. That's not Miles Sanders for Tank Dell? Okay. Yeah, exactly. And you probably like Tank Dell's status the rest of the year more than Miles Sanders. I would agree with that too. But maybe pl- do a little gamesmanship. Hold on to him through that Thursday night game next week. So one week from the day of recording this. If he falls apart, some leagues let you drop bench players after they've already played. Maybe then you drop him. Or you try to start facilitating a trade right from there if he actually does go off because that is the matchup that he should see his ceiling. And if he doesn't have a ceiling there, I'm not too confident in playing him anywhere anyway. I like it. Well, you just talked about DeAndre Swift, so why don't you talk about the team on the far right of your T-shirt, at least the way I'm looking at it. Yeah, I think that's correct. I don't know. Um, we got week, the. <laughs> it's Dallas week, everybody. It is the Dallas Cowboys and the Philadelphia the Rangers. Eagles. Yeah, Rangers winning the World Series. Thank you for beating Arizona. Dude, I don't even think the ESPN sent me a notification about the World Series being over. Like, just like a general sports notification. 
Like I, I'm so interested to see, and maybe it's just because we live in Philadelphia or close to Philadelphia. So like baseball was like very prominent in our area. Like, I feel like this has to, sorry for the tangent, has to no, be good. one of the most unwatched World Series of the last 15 years. The early numbers said that it was the lowest watched game one of a World Series in a long time. But we can't really take initial numbers because of all the streaming services now. That's going to be added in later. Um, so we'll see. But I would agree that I think between people that we you know people would have wanted to see the Astros go you know, lose again because the you know they cheat and the Phillies had so much hype not even from Philadelphia but around the league because of every you know their character and everything else like if either of those teams made the world series I think it would have been better complete tangent we can get back to football and we can talk about Dallas Cowboys Philadelphia Eagles you mentioned DeAndre Swift it has not been as pretty the last few weeks but I think the Eagles are going to have to get back to running the ball more than they have been so I'm not really in panic mode about DeAndre. Not Smith. pretty. Did you see the fake tush push? That was glory. oh, 100. It was it was it was pretty by that, and it really padded those fantasy numbers. But like he hasn't been getting the workload or had those big explosive games like he did week two, week three, week four. Um, the touchdown definitely did help had those numbers, like I said. Um, but over under for this game 47. I'm expecting a pretty high scoring game. Because the Cowboys can pass the ball on the Eagles. The Eagles have been pretty good against the run. Worries me a little bit about Tony Pollard, but you're going to play him anyway. Um, but I don't know if the secondary is going to be able to hold down Dak or C.D. Lamb or maybe even Jake Ferguson. Um, Eagles side of the ball, I think that they're going to score points on Dallas, but Dallas is going to have a couple of takeaways. So Hertz might get a couple of minus hits there, but good chance he's going to run for a touchdown. He's still going to get his points. Playing AJ Brown, playing Devontae Smith, playing Dallas Goddard. This is one of those games where it's I don't care if they're normal mainstays in fantasy, you're pushing them. So what is your thoughts on Cowboys defense? I know they had they haven't been as dominant, but they were back to 16 points last week. Uh or expect a high scoring game to cut the Cowboys defense. But would you be willing to look at a team this week if you could pick up the Saints? that we talked about playing the bears or the Browns against the Cardinals, like one of those, because those are pretty regularly available ones. Um, what are your thoughts on streaming those over the Dallas Cowboys or you're just going to roll with it in as an Eagles fan, you hate to say it, but they might get a couple turnovers and still put in a solid week. I still think they're going to get the couple turnovers and put in a solid week. Like I'm just trying to look back like, um, historically here for the season. Their bad games came against Arizona. Everyone was slamming them to play, you know, slamming play against Arizona. San Francisco, that was the one where you probably could have predicted maybe you shouldn't play them against San Francisco. They scored seven against the Chargers. That's still a decent week. Like if you're going to end up getting seven to 12 out of them against Philly, you're going to be like, ah, I'd probably feel more comfortable playing them as opposed to going out there and playing the Saints just because their defense isn't as solid. I think because of the boom potential that comes with a defense like the Cowboys, you have to roll them out anyway. Um, and it's a divisional game. You never really know what's going to happen. And that kind of goes both ways. It could end up being a very bad game. And then it's like, well, the Cowboys defense have gotten me this far. I lost by trusting them. Or it could be, oh, they really surprised me and actually held down the Eagles and scored 20 points on defense. And so it, Defenses in general are high variance, but because they've gotten you this far, I think they're pretty much matchup proof. Cool, cool. I like it. And we are getting long for this podcast. So let's move through this next game pretty quick. Uh, it's NFC North still. It's the New York Giants for the Las Vegas Raiders. I'm going to start with the Giants. You can play Saquon Barty. Okay. End of this discussion with the Giants. The cool. Raiders. Uh, I know it was rough last week. But we, we've talked about this in the past and previous seasons. Teams always get a spark of energy for a head coaching change, for an interim head coach. It might be for one week. It might be for four weeks. It might be for the rest of the season. But this matchup, with what all the stuff we've heard on, don't fear, play Devontae Adams. You can play Jacoby Myers. You're playing Josh Jacobs. Ricky Aiden O'Connell is going to start and – Devonta did really well with him that last time he played when, against the Chargers. He had a really good game. Yep. So I'm playing the Raiders in this matchup. It's at home. 
it's probably going to be electric. Uh, you know, take the Raiders, maybe even take over on the points. Like they might learn how to score points this week with the only a low uh, over under of 37. So you're going to need the Giants score some points, which is why that's sketchy. But uh, I like the Raiders this week against the Giants. And I mean, the Giants should be able to score a couple. Um, Daniel Jones coming back, don't play him. But like the Raiders defense isn't fantastic. They basically got Max Crosby. Um, so you should be able to get a couple of points. I like the idea of the over because I could see it being Raiders 30, Giants 10, for example. That's the over already. All right. Sunday night football. Game of the week. For sure. For sure. For sure. For sure. The, bu- the Buffalo Bills return to Cincinnati on Sunday night football. Juicy. Juicy matchup. Juicy matchup. And uh, first, the obvious thing is first, it's going to be electric for a couple of reasons. One, it'll be DeMar Hamlin returning. Uh, not 100% sure if he's going to play. I know he has been a healthy scratch. Uh mm-hmm. A couple times this year, so I'm not 100 percent sure how the it's going to work out now that they've acquired another defensive back in Rasul Douglas. Uh, and there's a lot of players there. I would not be surprised though if he is active, uh, just as like a and gets to play on special teams and stuff like that, kind of for a full circle moment, which will be very cool to see for him. Um, but by the way, just he, before you go further, th- this one's in Cincinnati, I believe the other one was in Buffalo. It ha- no, when he the playoff last year was in Buffalo. Oh, you're but, right. You're right. But when he, uh, the Monday night game you're that right. got ended My was bad. in Cincinnati. Uh, so these teams have, pl- have gotten to know each other pretty well over the last couple of seasons. Uh, so this one should be a game. Joe Burrow's back. Jamar Chase is balling. T. Higgs is slowly starting to get more involved. Tyler Boyd caught a touchdown last week. Joe Mixon is a solid running back. On the Bills side, they did sign Leonard Fournette. We didn't talk about that in the news notes, uh, but they got him. They signed Linval Joseph. They went out and got Russell Douglas. This team is going all in to make a run. None of those guys are like important fantasy wise. Want to get that out there? But you, Gabe Davis has been playing well of late. Dalton Kincaid looked really good now that he was the only tight end. Uh, as Don Knox deals with some injuries, uh, so play everybody. Like, and we <laughs> saw in that game, that Monday night game, it was like seven nothing. Uh, or like seven, seven, I don't remember what the score was when it happened, but they, the teams are moving the ball, uh, and I think that'll happen again this week. It'll be a lot of energy, high scoring. Maybe not enough to push the over of 50 points. I mean, probably will, but keep that in mind. Uh, but I think this is going to be a great game, and I'm definitely looking for two Sunday night. 100%. I think you covered that very well, too. We're playing everybody, and we're going to sit back and watch a really good nightcap to a long Sunday quadruple header. I pulled that word out of my mouth. One more game before we get out of here. And I guess we have a couple other things. Monday night football is the LA chargers traveling East to the New York jets. Um, over under this game set at 40, despite the jets offense still struggling. Um, jets are underdogs by three and a half. Uh, only major injury we're looking at in this game is Josh Palmer did not participate in practice. On Thursday, that's the first injury report for the week for the Monday night game. Um, And he know he did leave the game temporarily last week. Uh, I know he's been somebody who's been kind of helping people through since the Mike Williams injury. Keep him on your bench this week. Just don't even try it um, with any other kind of, you know, Monday night and whatever. Like, I don't even want to deal with insurance policies and stuff for that one. Yeah. Uh, For in terms of who to play. Brees Hall, Garrett Wilson, play them. Brees Hall, Garrett Wilson. I feel like I'm still sketchy about Garrett Wilson, but like he's shown he's good enough to get enough good plays out of Zach Wilson to be relevant every week. He's so playing better than Chris Olave, who you said at the beginning of the season would be better. Okay, we don't have to mention this now. Uh, and then on the Chargers side, Keenan Allen, Austin Eckler, Justin Herbert. Yep. Eckler finally looked like he's coming back, which is good to see. I think that might have been his first good game of the year since week one. Yeah, it was. It was his first. Yeah. Uh, he had a good game week one, but since the injury, he had a couple slow, what he looked like back to form. This Jets defense is very good. So 
Uh, this could be a, and the Chargers like to go for and fourth down and not take points. So, like, this game could easily be like 13 mm-hmm. 7, uh, or it could be 37 to 10. Like, who knows with the Chargers? That's, that is the it's brandiest- 100% true. The Chargers the normally don't win games going away like that, though, and they just won one. So, are they really going to do two in a row? Probably not. Probably not. Uh, but I will say also a lot of streaming talk around the Chargers tight ends this week uh, because the Jets are really good on defense against everybody except for the tight end. Um, so Gerald Everett's somebody that has potential to be played this week also. If he's back. I know he missed last week's game. He was a full participant already on Thursday. So should looking good. Or Donald Parham because he likes to catch touchdowns. Chicken Parham. All right. You want to do some survivor picks? Survivor picks. Cody, I'm going to need you to say your survivor pick exactly how it's written on the screen. Uh, okay, so I was actually going to change mine live. Oh, uh, come so, on. So at first when we did this, George's George, little background, George's like, all right, give me your survivor pick for the rundown. And I, I literally said, Saints, I guess, sure. But I'm going to say that was Tyler's pick now. Since Tyler's okay, now with good. us. Congratulations, Tyler. You got Saints, I guess, sure. And uh, I hyped myself up. I'm picking the Raiders over the Giants, interim head coach and all. Uh, don't know if I'd pick the rest of the season, but it's the Giants. It's a good matchup. There's always an influx when a new head coach comes in. George is like, whoo. That I is a it. spicy pick there. But I, I, I talked myself into it. I'm out and Man. I'm in Survivor League uh, because of uh, yeah. <laughs> a really bad game. So, But uh, that's what I would do this week if you're still hanging in there. All right, so, I mean, mine I might want to change on Sunday if I hear that a certain quarterback that, like, Call of Duty is playing. But I do not think Kyler Murray is going to be active. So, regardless of the quarterback for the Browns, I am taking Cleveland this week. Uh, Not a lot of positions where I'd feel confident playing them, but Cardinals starting Clayton Toon sounds like a good one. It does. It does. All right. That's Survivor Picks. Still no bumper because Cody is lazy. Uh, so George, burr, burr. Burr, burr. yeah, good. How to spend, or how to spend? It's time to spend <laughs> Tyler's money. If you're new here, what this is is uh, Tyler, our third co-host, who is not this uh, this evening as he's going through some stuff, uh, just gives us five dollars and we get to make a bet. And he did give us our bet, and last week we did over unders, I believe. No spreads. And then we did over under the before spreads. Yep. And I think we were two out of three on spreads. Yep. Or it was like one, one and a push or something like that. Yeah. So we are, uh, we're oh for three. We've lost $15 so far. So we do a $5 bet, three leg parlay. Um, and this week we're going back to how it started because I wasn't a part of the first one. And that is touchdown scores. And I sent Tyler a text and I should have just known who he was going to pick because he would probably pick this anyways. But the first guy in our parlay uh, for touchdown scores is the master of the tush push, master of the brotherly shove, the rear steer, whatever you want to call it. The that rear is steer. Man, that's one I I feel like that was Dude, like I, the initial nickname for the. <laughs> hey, whatever it may be. Uh, but Jalen Hurts uh, is the first person in his the parlay. I'm trying to put up here to look at the odds as I'm talking through this live. But uh, George. What is your anytime touchdown score this week? Man, I've been struggling with this all episode. I don't really know where to go. I was debating going A.J. Brown because he's on a burner, but I'm not going to pick two Eagles in this parlay. Since Tyler took Jalen Hurts, I'm going to have to steer off that one a little bit. Um, I think that bills Bengals game is going to be a pretty high-scoring one. And I think probably the most obvious bangle to pick is going to be Jamar Chase. I'm going to go with someone who hasn't scored a lot of touchdowns this week. I think Joe Mixon gets in the end zone. Joe Mixon. Joe Mixon and Jamar Chase do currently have uh, the same odds for any time score. Minus 130. <laughs> wow. So, Joe Mixon. Cool, cool. Then my pick, uh, having the best odds at plus 160 is the guy I've talked about. I just switched my survivor pick. Devontae Adams. 
Oh. Going to take him. So just so you know, uh, so the parlay will be Jalen Hurts, Devontae Adams, Joe Mixon, and each touchdown scores. Three pick parlay ends up at plus seven seventy eight. So five dollars wins forty three ninety. So we can get back in the positive if this hits. Uh, so that will be our how we're spending Tyler's money this week. What are your thoughts on our parlay? I feel pretty good. I feel pretty good too. And it's interesting because this is actually higher odds than our last one last week. I think it was only like $36 to win there. Not the one the week before when you went bold and said, we're going to take a over under that's 10 points under the line. And it still hit. I tried <laughs> to tell him. I tried to tell him. But that'll wrap up another episode of the Couch GM's podcast. As always, thanks for listening. Um, reminder, at the Couch GM's on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, all those places in the comments, in the DMs. We'll answer your fantasy questions. I'm Cody Roadcap. That's George Kurt. And we will talk to you all next week.